Hello, Tiger fans. We are back. Welcome back to a brand new season of the Hey Corner Crew podcast. As always, I am your host, JJ Lang. With me, as always, are my two wonderful co-hosts. First things first, you know him, you love him, Nate the Little Goonfoss. Season two, let's go. And RIT's resident stat reading person guy, Dan the Stat Man Scully. We couldn't even get through the first intro without you. Listen, I got distracted by the fact that you're not wearing anything RIT, and Nate disappeared for a good 20 seconds there. That was fun. <laughs> would it, not would even, it be this? We're not even 20 seconds in, and we're already ripping JJ to shreds. I love it. Would you expect <laughs> anything less? No. Would you and expect that's it for anything today's less? episode. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> So now that we've gotten that absolutely oh. awful intro out of the way, uh, we are back. The news of the season is quickly approaching very fast. And today is going to just be our first episode back. We're going to go over a lot of off season news um, for both CHA and Atlantic and just kind of go over some stuff that's happened. Um, key transfers and things like that. And a, a lot of just news in general, that's going to affect both the men's and women's RAT Tigers hockey programs. Um so first things first, we're going to start with CHA and we're going to just jump right in right off the bat um, and I'll swing it over to Dan. We can get going there. Yeah, swing it to the one guy who prepared absolutely nothing for this podcast. Nah, it's all right. We never prepare anything. Hey, one that ever does low, low budget podcast. Hey, exactly. look, the CHA has welcomed a new digital media manager. He just oh. pulled up the website, didn't he? <laughs> no. That's actually a good idea. I should probably do that. <laughs> yeah, I might want to. Well, wait. Um, hang on, hang on. I got, so I'd say the biggest news of the off season is, uh, I know we touched on it at the end of our last season, uh, new commissioner, Michelle, is here. She's made some changes already. Very excited for that. Um, like Atlanta Hockey and CHA are finally, after all these years of having the same governing body, going to merge and be one conference finally. Thank God. Next year. Next year. Yes. <laughs> so, like, I almost wonder if there's a name change coming. So I can I see guess, it. I guess we do have to consider that this could be the last year of the CHA and Atlanta Hockey. But. Well, do we think they may just pick one or the other? Like, they just make the whole conference Atlantic Hockey, or do you think they would just change I, it to College Hockey America? I think they Atlantic go Atlantic College way. Hockey America. Because that won't Ahacha. be a confusing acronym at all. Ahacha? Is that what you just said? Yes, that's uh, Zoe's uh, new name suggestion. Oh, that's actually <laughs> not a bad idea. Thanks, Zoe. Just combine the two. Yes. Um, I'd say the other big thing is Robert Morris is back this year. For both conferences, which Woo-hoo. is big. Yeah, another team to beat. Woohoo! <laughs> Welcome back, Robert Morris. We missed being able to make fun of you. Welcome back. You still suck. Yep. <laughs> and all honesty, though, the way their program kind of got terminated before was really crappy. Um, and I'm really glad that their new president and the you know community in Pennsylvania was able to really help build them back. I, I know the Penguins at one point were involved with helping them out, so... It, it's it's just good all around that we have them back again because they shouldn't they should never have left in the first place. No, absolutely. Um, and it really was just college hockey as a community hockey the hockey world. Yeah, really just... helped save the program. Like there were people from all over the place that were like, "Hey, this is wrong. This isn't helping the game." And no, it's actually making it worse because now you have a major hockey market like Pittsburgh without an NCAA team. Yeah. So, but well, they're back. Well, and with only 60-some Division One men's teams and 40-some women's teams, the, mm-hmm. to lose one is is big. Is he, Yeah. It's massive. Well, and you saw what it did for our conference, too. It threw us all into a whack. That was nuts. And just like scheduling and playoff formats and all the other fun stuff. Um, speaking of schedules and playoffs, um, we did find out what the CHA postseason is going to look like this year. 
We did. <sighs> Don't like it. Um, top four make the playoffs, so really nothing changed. So effectively, just the bottom two teams just get axed. Yeah. Is, is, It'll be for those who are it's, it's for those the same who are unacquainted. Uh, yes. Except for instead of one team, it's just two. I don't know how sucks. I feel about that. I hate it. Although the, they did uh, rename the trophy to the Robert D. Gregorio Cup. I don't know if that was last year that they changed that. or. I think it was this season. I think. Yes. I want to this say this upcoming, say this upcoming right. season. Yeah. Or... yeah, I want to well, say Dan's right. They... Oh, you you mean when is it first going to be awarded as? I don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought you were asking me if they renamed it in the future. Oh no. I don't. Uh, no, like I don't know about I you guys. Saying, I don't have a DeLorean. Yeah, I wish it was. I do. Um, of course you do. There's you two of them. Point into your ceiling. <laughs> no, the shelf up there. There's two DeLorean time machines up there. Yeah, do no, they wait, work? Please check the replay. I'm pretty Maybe. sure you pointed the ceiling the first time. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm all backwards. I can't tell which hand is pointing where, and all. <laughs> it's it's tough. This podcast is a mess. Um, Would you have it any other way, Nathan? No, I wouldn't. Um, and Nate, just like the CHA playoff format didn't change, the podcast hasn't changed either. It's <laughs> always been a mess. That's very true. Um. So yeah, that sucks. Um, again, I disagree with it. Um, not just because it could inevitably hurt us, possibly, but I think in college sports you should be able to play in the postseason no matter your record. Because if you say you don't like upsets, you're lying, yeah, or you're the fun. fan of the team that got upset. So I don't mind leagues having a cutoff but when you're a league that has the minimum number to get an auto bid in the first place you yeah, you, should you shouldn't be cutting teams from the no. postseason if this was like big 10 or something i'd be like whatever like who cares because any of those teams could make the postseason just by being themselves they don't, they don't have to win their conference titles to get in but they were some... they were colgate winning ECAC away from having five teams in the tournament in the Big Ten this year. Yeah. But because Colgate won ECAC, they Notre Dame got marked out. Weird. Wild, man. Stupid. But nothing Stupid. we can do about it. No. Win some hockey games. I mean, who knows what Robert Morris is going to be this year. Um, I know they brought in players, but you never know. They're kind of a – they're just they're a mystery basically box start, right now. They're kind of starting over in a sense. I mean, they have some veteran players, including some that have been in our conference for a while. And um, we'll see with them, at least on the women's side. I think I think they'll I mean, be good on the men's side, but I mean for, we'll for both I mean even for both sides, like they got they had what like up to 10 transfer students that like they really rely they're they're relying heavily this year on transfer students which for both men's and women's and it could honestly go either way like they could because those players have never for the most part we assume may not have actually ever played together before so they kind of have one year to hope these guys all gel to hope these guys and girls all gel together it's like it might not like it might not work and unlike other programs where you get these guys like over a majority of your team is younger players and they, you get those couple of years for those guys, to re- guys and girls to really like, you know, get in there, form bonds, work together, learn how to be a team in Robert Morris's case for both teams this year, they have to hope to God that their transfer students just get thrown right in and make an impact off of that because they make up a majority of the roster this time around. And that's just, that's not really the team's fault. That's just, Chris Howard's fault for doing what to them, what happened to them. And we can talk more about people that transferred there from in the conference. If you want to bring it up and for CHA first, we'll get to Atlanta for to Robert Morris later. Find it. But also um, being able to sort of build a team around some transfer players like that. And, and with the kind of support that 
they're going to have coming back next year in the stands too. It, I think I think they're a wild card. I think yes. it, I think by the time we get to the halfway point of the season, we're going to have a good feel for what they can do, but yep. right now they're a wild card. They have I eight also... graduate students on their roster this year. For the women's team or the men's team? Women. Okay, that's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six. And correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think their women's coaching staff and came 10 back. freshmen. Yeah, no, they did. They, I they, think they, they, all, got... they, they all came yeah. back? Okay. I think for the most part, yes. Because I know from talking with, so if people, if you're not in the Discord, we have a, a, a friend of ours that's all... He's a Robert Morris uh, graduate, worked a lot with Century Media, John Hanna. Uh, he was talking about originally when they said, oh, we're going to bring the teams back, how he was kind of questioning whether or not, are you going to get those coaches to come back? And um, also, okay. So hang on. It looks like uh, Logan Biddle, their head coach, it's his first time being the women's head coach, but he's been a coach at Robert Morris before, and he played at RMU. Okay. So, so he, I mean – He's no so they technically the speaking school, did is... lose their head coach. Right, but they don't lose a guy that knows Robert Morris. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. Like, I think he, yeah. he was a great pick for them, especially come right now. Like, if, for the situation they're in, 100%, great pick. But I'm just kind of like, their women's program was a unit. Yeah. They just, they were yeah. unstoppable. And then yeah. overnight, they were just done. Gone. They went. And the whole from, program is so. Dead. So they technically, died overnight. Champ. The, the Are they technically defending a title? No. Do we technically have two teams defend? I mean, if you really think about it, nobody took it from them. Yes. Yeah, Chris Howard did. Chris Howard took it from them okay. when, when he terminated the program. Saying his name. Sure. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, Howard, I was, comma, Chris. You know, we know he's the reason for why they didn't have a team, so I have no problem calling him out. <laughs> um, I, I look at it this way. It, like you said, they're a wild card, but we're going to know within the first month, month and a half, what kind of team they have. And that's a, eight grad students. That's a very veteran and experienced lineup looking at where they came from. You know, there's a couple from St. Cloud. There's a couple from, you know, upper level programs that are like, okay, I have a chance to come in. I have a chance to play. And some girls coming from programs that know how to win. Oh, yeah. And I feel like their I feel like their team this year, CHA side, is either going to be fairly strong or they're going to struggle right off the bat. I, I just – that's how I see it because they have a lot yeah. – like. They're not going to be what they once were. If you're expecting to go to on a game and see the Robert Morris women's hockey of old, it's not going to happen because that team is gone, sadly. And it's a crying shame because that team was fun to watch. That team was so good. Now, Grant, from a bias standpoint, good. <laughs> they're, they're not going to obliterate mean, us really five times. From a bias standpoint, I'm okay with it. But. Yeah. Well, well, you, gonna... you know who their goaltender was. Yeah, Ariel Desmet. Thank you, Syracuse. <laughs> Is she gone? Was she a grad student this past year? I think so. Thank let's, God. But let's double check and make sure that we're ready. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Because I don't think I can tolerate another season of Ariel Desmet being the reason we don't beat Syracuse all um, four or five days. Oh, I forgot Syracuse updated their website. Oh, it looks Ew. weird. Well, you know, Sidearm was started by SU grads, so SU always gets the, the first chance she at it. She is gone. She's not here. Oh, yet. thank the Lord. Um, um, were there I guess that's other... a good transition into Syracuse then. Cause... Yes. Cause um, they lost some players. Yeah. Um, Madison Primo's gone. has gone too, right? She went to RMU. Marchand's gone. She transferred somewhere. Or, no, I don't even think she got picked up by anybody. I think she just straight up graduated. Marchand definitely Mad- didn't graduate. Then where did she go? Because she's not. She must have gone somewhere. I saw her name in the portal yesterday. When I was yeah, she was there. a sophomore <laughs> last year. 
keeping track of the women's hockey transfer portal is, it- is so obnoxious. <laughs> Because they, yeah. like the server that we're in that has updates on stuff for the one Discord server we're in doesn't do updates for the women's side, and it drives me bananas because I want to just know what's happening for both, not just one. Well, I have a spreadsheet of somebody that's been doing it, <laughs> and I'm trying to find it, and I don't see her on here. Oh, there she is. Sarah Marchant. She didn't get picked up by anybody. So she's just floating right now. That's wild. Didn't... They had a coaching change last year, right? Yes. Yeah. That screams not good news for them. Yeah. The fact that she just straight up left. Yep. I mean, we've seen that before, sadly. I mean, talented players don't just leave programs and not no. get picked up by anybody. But or maybe she was I mean, I'm not I don't want to speculate, but if if she, I mean, we yeah. all know how, we all know how good she is, but maybe it was an issue with her and not with the coaches. But I'm not, I don't want to speculate on that. Yeah, who knows? We don't um, know what the reason is. Oh, and it, it could even be non hockey things too. Could yeah, be that too, right? It, it could be academic. It could be yeah. other things. There is there is a multitude of reasons why she could have gone to the portal. Could have just been family stuff. Who knows? We're not going to sit and speculate on it. Um, so they're going to, I mean, from the looks of it, they have a relatively young team too. Um, but I mean, it's SU, they're going to draw players that, that are good because they want to go to a school like SU, who I don't want to say supports the women's hockey program all that well, but. You can say that they play at the Ten of the Ice Pavilion. The What? They said they play at the Tennessee Ice Dump. You could full out you. say that they do not support their team. And Dan and just despawned from his, his camera. Oh, look at that beautiful section right there. Look at that. Oh, it's almost like we'll October be back October 20th. Months. It's going to look absolutely stunning. I know, right? Ew, Dan, move. We can't look at the thing anymore. <laughs> You're blocking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Just stay right there. That's an the oldie. Jeez, that's an old one. That's um, a blackout too. Nice. I see Christian Short. <laughs> is it oh, the, the man, the myth, the legend, Christian Short? Is it um, backwards for you guys, or is it the right way around? No, it's, it's just the right way. That's the right way. Okay, uh, it's Chris bad McKay for me. <laughs> Chris McKay there in the middle. Absolute unit himself. Yeah. Oh no, and then there's Jordan Peacock. Oh, sorry. Um, that was that was a given. Um, anyways, speak. Speaking of teams losing people to the transfer portal, Mercy Hirsch did not do that. They decided it. Nope. nope, they brought everybody back. Mercy Hirsch said, "Let's run it back. Let's just take the whole roster and just copy paste to the next year." So, dude, they, I, it's I mean, ridiculous. They are going to be probably the scariest team in the conference. Like, I I say, think they got to be the favorite to win CHA this year. Like Penn State's there, but yeah. I think. I, I think they're the it's team that's like, it. yep, they're going to just roll right in and do what they want. Well, and they've already played four games already. They were just in Sweden. They played a bunch of the Ooh, Swedish right. national that's teams. Right. I forgot about that. I was wondering what the they, heck they you were They lost all four games. But... I'm like, what universe do you live in where they're playing already? <laughs> I forgot they were overseas. Um, uh, they lost all four games, but they were they lost one in overtime, and then another one was three two, I think. So close. Yeah, they really didn't lose anybody, and that's not good oh if you're an God. RIT fan. I'm gonna send you guys this picture, but they all look freaking stupid in these t-shirts. <laughs> it's not a good thing if you're a fan of any other CHA team. No, like no, they not they particularly. they're. <laughs> amazing and that it's they're also like the cha program yeah Yeah. Uh uh-huh how many titles it's a lot i i don't want to know how many the answer is just yes (laughs) (laughs) what are are those shirts you're right those are awful am i right those are horrible (laughs) how did you did i was on the website Ew! All right, ready? <laughs> they, they, they look like Scully. Syracuse players. Scully, are you ready? <laughs> oh three, oh four, oh five, oh six, oh seven, oh eight, oh nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, sixteen, eighteen, and twenty. Oh my god! 
and I, and one wow. goal away from being last year's champions too. Two thousand nine, they Lord. were they were the national runner up. <laughs> oh my god! They've been to four Frozen Fours. It's, uh... Yeah, so to say Jesus. that they're dominant is an understatement. Well, and we beat them in one year too, so it's true. It wasn't that That's impressive. double overtime. Oh God! I've never been so stressed out at a hockey. Game I before. I hate double overtime, Dan. Stop bringing it up because you well, know what's going to happen. And then point. they decided to do it again the next year. Thanks, Celeste. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hate it. Hate double overtime. Nope, not doing that again. Um, Lindenwood kind of did the same thing. They didn't really lose anybody. Um, but Lindenwood's also not that good, so that's fine. They right, beat right, us. They, uh, yeah. Okay. Shut up. That's a th- yes, but who else did they beat besides us? They almost Syracuse. beat Syracuse. They beat. They Syrac- did beat Syracuse. We beat Syracuse too. So they beat Syracuse once. There was another one where Syracuse like won by the skin of their teeth. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I feel like I got home and like home home back in Hastings and saw a text from you that was like Syracuse almost lost to Lincoln. <laughs> We were probably a few minutes away from honestly saying we could catch Syracuse too. <laughs> that was honestly, you're totally right. <laughs> if they had beaten Syracuse, it would have been like, oh, well, Hughes is, we didn't. Hughes is now the team to jump to get into the playoffs now. Yeah, but um, who do we got left? Penn State. Penn State. They're be the scary. only ones that we haven't. They're talked always to. scary. That's just it's not Penn- even. Although they lost Kyra Zan and she went to Ohio State. That's true. They did. So, I mean, they lost a little bit in the portal, but, I mean, they also re- – Penn State doesn't rebuild. They reload, so. That's – yeah, that's a, another understatement to be had. Don't really need to get into them too much, but – No, because they'll be, they'll be who they are. Yes. Well coached, fast, mm-hmm. can score, play yep. well defensively. So, that'll be – And – that's pretty much it when it comes to CHA. There really wasn't much. It was kind of, I don't want to say slow news summer, but like there really, there weren't any like big explosive signings. I mean, we brought in a lot of, uh, we were not, we have a couple incoming players who Nate and I were talking a couple nights ago. They look like they're going to be outstanding for us. We'll talk. We'll talk about them a little bit later though. Yeah. We'll, we'll probably go into them more when we do the women's season preview and stuff like that. Um, we could do it too. By, by, by the way, if you couldn't tell, we had trouble figuring out what exactly the scope of this episode was going to be. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. kind of just going with it. <laughs> well, now we kind of have a, a layout for the men's side. So, yes, we, 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 we have a kind of go through the news so and then go through a couple of things from every team. But, mm-hmm. all right, uh, women's hockey season starts September 23rd. It's almost here. Oh yes, pretty excited. They're. Uh, we'll talk more about our team in the in the season preview, but I got some thoughts. Mm-hmm. So and do I. I think we all do. We might we might be watching a whole different type of team next year this year. But... Let's hope. Let's hope. I, I'm very optimistic. Very optimistic for this season. Oh, for sure. Oh, yes. And I think, like, I, I think we said, too, there's a, a lot of talent left the conference, but some did come in and some stayed. So Some of it stayed and they just kind of moved around. Yeah. And, you know, throwing a whole nother team you have to jump through doesn't help either because that's four games that you have. It's four more games you got to win. So, yeah. Like I said, we'll go over that more when we, when we get there. But, mm-hmm. So moving on to the Atlantic hockey side of things now and looking at some of the stuff going on over here, there is a lot more teams to get to. We are now back to 11 with the um, return of Robert Morris. And again, for the, for the, for the Atlantic hockey side of things, it's more of the same. Um, They're going to be a wild card till about the halfway point. We're really not going to know what to expect from them. Um, I think they will be a little bit better than the women's program to start off. 
just because I don't think their coaches left. I'm pretty sure their men's coaches are all still, for the most part, intact. From what I understand, coach definitely is Derek at least. Yeah, yes, their head coach definitely stayed. I know that their assistants may have hung out also a couple of them, but I, I, I can't say for sure. I know the head coach for sure is still there. Right. So um, that, that off the bat is a good so- good start for them. And they have a good amount of talent coming into their roster. Yes. Maybe. As transfers, um, and the fact that they have a starting goalie right off the bat is mm-hmm. massive. They only get him for a year, <clears throat> Chad. Right, but it's a buffer year for them. Oh, and exactly. He might not even. He might oh, even wait, play. His, his stats are skewed because the other goalie they got only played in one game. I was like nine thirty eight save percentage. Dang. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah no one game. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey man, small sample size. It's still there. Hey, we're talking Chad statistics. Won 18 games. Chad won 18 games last year. So that's it's nothing to laugh at. No, not at all. But the I mean, pop photo is, is an idiot, but that's all right. Um, um th- they brought in three guys from Mercyhurst as well. Um biggest one, Riley St. Ange. So mm-hmm. that's I I think Robert Morris is gonna be better than a lot of people think they will be. They probably um, will be. I have them in the middle of the pack in Atlanta hockey. I don't think they'll be the best team. I don't think they'll be the worst no. team either. No. But I think they may skew towards the bottom of the conference. I don't think yeah. they'll be. I think we're in for another. It comes down to the last weekend. Yeah, for them. Um, Because our I playoff mean, for, format for is. Every, for everybody. Everybody's back in the postseason now. Yeah, so um, I was, I was, I was be... just going to say that. Thank God. Um, Rip Bentley in Air Force last year. And I, again, I hate that. I, and for a it team like for a team like Air Force, who I didn't even think they falked that. it up. Um, <laughs> oh, no, that that's horrible. That's bad. Oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you trying? Thank you, Aaron Huss, for giving me that. That's so good. Oh, Aaron, I um, expect better from Aaron. I don't expect better. He's from been saying game. it in the Discord for months. What are you talking about? Um, no, I mean like, Air, and I feel for a team like Air Force too because injuries really derailed their season. But if they can, if Air Force can find a way to stay healthy, they're going to be way better than they were last year. Oh my and, God! Yes. Because now they got a lot of guys that might not have gotten a lot of ice time. They got a lot of ice time. Mm-hmm. So it'll be. I'm I'm going to be loop, looping yeah. back to Robert Morris real quick before we move on to some other teams. I'm going to be interested to see how they, how much they lean on Chad Beltry. Obviously, we love to make fun of him to no end, and rest assured, we are going to make fun of him every last chance we get because this is our last time with him. So. He is going to be thanking the Lord himself that he's out of Atlantic hockey after this year because he won't have to deal with us anymore. Um, but how heavily will they lean on him? Is it going to be like, yeah. hey, like if you play bad, we're totally screwed because our other goaltenders can't carry the load? Well, and let me year, say this too: like they good on their coaches for not they did not build an easy non conference schedule for them either. No, God, off no. the bat. They have a home and home with Bowling Green. They have to go to Alaska, which is hard, whether they That's suck or not. Trip. It's hard. They they're home against ASU, and then they go to Minnesota. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's not good on their coaching staff for not scheduling an easy the conference easy out of conference it, because the NCAA they could have just said back, we're going to do what have fun getting throttled. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't want to say throttled, but. I mean, Minnesota's going to turn them inside out. Let's just make that abundantly clear. I I don't see Minnesota. That game is not going to be close. They will pound to them. Well, yeah, but I mean, I would expect that for any Atlantic hockey team except us. Um, Facts. Hundred <laughs> percent agree with you. There's no orange bias honest? in this podcast. Can I be honest? Can I be honest? If we were going to Minnesota, I would expect to get throttled. <laughs> I'm going to be hundred percent. I would go into that game with. Zero hope. And Raider. <laughs> Either of those. 
Stay clear. Dead. You know that I am probably arguably one of the most diehard RIT fans and one of the most biased RIT fans. I'm also a realist. <laughs> we get smoked. <laughs> With or without Logan Cooley, we get smoked. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's kind of scary. Um anyways, well, he's moving on. So um, so going at, let, let, let's go back to Air Force because we kind of briefly touched on them. But if they can stay healthy, they'll be fine. Obviously, the military schools don't really have the ability to use the transfer portal because if you transfer to a military school, guess what? You're gonna get shipped off the year afterwards. Um, although I'm pretty you sure can. you can't transfer it. Yeah, that, that that's what thing. I mean. Like it's not possible. You yeah. can transfer out, but you just can't yep. transfer in, which I'm pretty sure happened this year. Uh, yeah, one of their defensemen, Brandon Kachi, graduated yes, he, and transferred. He, he transferred out. I don't remember so where he, he went. Uh, Mankato. Really? Good Who thing. had a mass exodus this year. Yeah, that was kind of Their nuts. coach went to Wisconsin, and literally, I think they lost 13 players. That's kind of nuts. Yeah. Speaking of mass exoduses, uh, Bentley experienced that because it looks like half their roster said, bye-bye, we're done, and left, well, including their all-star freshman who pretty much went to the portal the minute the season was over, which I was shocked by that. Well, it, I was, it was so weird how uh, the Bentley head coach left, too. Like, the first that we yeah. that anyone knew about it was his Twitter post. Yeah, he tweeted himself that he was... Be- then he said he was like, he didn't say he was gone. He said they like um, like mutually agreed to part ways or something like that, wasn't it? I think something like that. Yeah, I think I read that he stepped down. Yes. Yeah. I so think that's again, we don't know why, but and we're not going to speculate why because that's just wrong. That's 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 this man's job we're talking about. Yes. So that's not something. Yeah, we're not. But like, you feel bad for the guy. Yeah, but that that was... that team last year was not good. And you've got to think maybe that had to play into the reason why a lot of these guys left, not co- like player wise, yeah. but also, well, yeah. I mean, I didn't get recruited by the new coach, so why would I stay? Yeah, and you know, you, like, but you also got to think for before. those guys. You also got to think it's kind of risky in the sense of you're on the worst team. Bite your tongue, mate. Bite your tongue. Um, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, just keep it shot. Mm-hmm. Like if you're playing for Bentley this past year, you're on the the dead last team in Atlantic hockey. Obviously, the rest of the conferences around college hockey treat us like nothing. So, do you really expect to go anywhere if you were on the worst team and what people argue is the worst conference? And ent- no, I would just stay there because no other team's gonna. Maybe another Atlantic team will take a chance. I mean, pick me up which is what I figure some of those guys probably were assuming, but like there's no guarantee you go to the portal. You're going to end up anywhere. Like it's a, it's a, like it's a very risky move. Like, especially at like, I mean, D one is a big thing, but like division three guys go to the portal all the time. And some of those guys, they, they, they go to the portal. No one gets picked up. They try to go back to their school and their school says, nah, you left. You're not coming back here. Like you're done. And who knows, like, that that's the thing you got to think about when you go in. But, like, Bentley had a ton of dudes leave. And it wasn't just grad students who were like, yeah, we're going to go play somewhere else. It was younger guys who had only been there for, like, a year or two that are like, see ya. We're done. That program this year, I expect them to finish dead last in the conference. Yeah. I, I have no hope for them. I don't Sorry, know, Dan Rubin, like, I have no hope for them. Yeah, Nick Niamh leaving is big. That's not good. It's not good when you lose your star freshman. Um, that's not. This isn't. Best... This isn't the first time that's happened for them either. By the way, no, it he happened was one of the best too. players in the conference last year, and he just walked out. Did Did anyone? T- did anyone pick him up? Maine. I don't think so. Maine. Maine did. Okay, so good. good on him we for play. Going so yeah, we get to play him again. Woohoo! Yeah. See how excited Maine. I am. So actually, it, it's almost like Maine did a trade because Nick Niemo and Harrison Scott went from Bentley to Maine, and then Samuel Dewar came from Maine to Bentley. That's funny. They did a trade. I'm sorry. Why would you want to play for Bentley? 
why would you want to play for Bentley? Like, I, I, nice, right? I'm, I'm not got, trying no, to look, like crap look, on them, Bentley, but like, why? Why would listen, you want to go there? Look, here, I, yes, you're in a very saturated college hockey market with all the Boston schools, but you're still in a major hockey market where you're going to get eyes on you in a nice True. facility, in a school that has put money into the program in the last couple of years. And you haven't seen the results on the ice, but when you have a coach that's, and I'm not blaming their former coach. I Bentley for a couple of years ago, and I think it was the COVID year. Bentley had a great year. They were, I think they were top five in the conference during the COVID year. And then COVID wiped it out and that was it. They were essentially done after that. And I think, I think it's that year. That it was, it might have been the COVID year, but um, the year COVID came in and cost us a championship. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for reminding I mean, me went, of that, Nate. They went 500, but they, I mean, that's a good year for Bentley. Uh, Sadly. Yeah. I mean, they, at this they, point, they, they've, they've kind of just become yeah. the punching bag of the conference. Because they just get wailed on at least once a weekend by a team, but then you kind of see them like they kind of take their foot off the brake because they don't have to, you know. Oh, we don't have to play all of our best guys because we don't got to worry about that. Are we just going in alphabetical order with the the punching bag of the no. league? No, Army was never really the punching bag. Which Army is a team we got to talk about? Yeah, yeah. we got to go to Army. Well, um, we'll get to that not one. not me forgetting that today. Army was in the conference. As he turns, Army's around. got some guys. Yeah, they've. They, you know they what? lost some guys, but, but you know they what? Still hey, got some guys. It's great to see they have a lot of good, like good, big, strong guys. Because, like you know, them guys are going to be fighting for a country. So, like, hey, that's cool with me. That was a rookie of the year, fruit. <laughs> Atlanta hockey rookie of the year, Max Adagaki's back. He had thirty nine or thirty three points in thirty seven games. Yeah, that's kind of insane. Not and only lie. four of them were goals. <laughs> what? Yeah, he had 29 assists as a four. That's insane. Because, because his line mate, Joey Baez, had 21 goals, seven assists for 28 points. He's yeah, a I, junior. Now, how many of those of goals, goals were from it again? <laughs> yeah, that's probably a lot. 12 of them. them. 12 of them were power play goals. So I'm sure it was Itagaki to Baez on the power play, and bang, it's in the back of the net. I'm also going to say, I think we're kind of lucky that we play. Kind of like if you just hit it, if you just send it to JoJo, it's in the back of the net. Sorry. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm if honestly. He, if he of, doesn't break his stick or fan on it, he's scoring. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm kind of glad we played Army the home opener last year because I don't we, think they had, they hadn't really gotten their legs yet. That they was they a lost spicy eight, game. Yeah. They lost eight of their first 10 games last year. And then they won absolutely insane the last half of the season. And they made yeah. it to, what, fifth or sixth in the conference? Yeah. Something like they that? finished yeah. in fifth. And they almost beat Canisius, who went on to win the conference. Yeah, don't remind so, me of that. It, it was what it was. It wasn't Niagara. That's all we can. That's fair. Speaking of Niagara. <laughs> no, we'll had, get to Niagara. We'll get, we'll they, get to Niagara. They had an excellent. I want to. I want to rip on one of our our, our good friends, um, Eric Lang. Yeah, let's crap on his parade real quick. Um, <laughs> now don't get me wrong. They have some guys coming back. Jordan Byro will be back. They got a goaltender. Um, they lost the guy that carried them a little bit in Blake Bennett. He graduated, yeah. signed pro. That's gonna be. T- they're not. You can't really replace him either. No, there's no replacing him. You can moneyball it and have two guys make up for his points. He was like, but, "It's yeah. not baseball." Dan, Dan loved my moneyball reference there. Don't get it wrong. Um, <laughs> Analytics. Yeah, like, but where are the A's? Now? The best movies ever. Shh, we don't talk about the A's. yeah Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do um, if you're in Oakland? You move to Vegas. Go to Vegas. Hey, listen. There's a team that's responsible for that. And Vegas is kind of known for winning now, so maybe it'll turn it around. Sure. Um, JJ, why, <laughs> Scully, why'd you get him on that? <laughs> You're lucky I didn't wear my jersey. Anyways, um, yeah, 
AIC is going to be interesting because Blake Bennett was kind of like the heart of their team. And Mm -hmm. now your team effectively has no soul. And they didn't really bring anybody in in the portal either. (laughs) No, That's that's a pretty bad thing in a conference that's mostly religious schools. What? (laughs) That he has no soul. (laughs) Listen, Eric Lang, we already know, is the spawn of Satan, so it's all right. (laughs) Jesus, JJ. (laughs) Um... no, never mind. I'm not gonna make. That. I'll save that joke for another day. All right. They didn't really bring in anybody either in the portal, so it. I I almost wonder if if this is gonna be a little bit of a rebuilding year for AIC. No, I mean a rebuilding year for AIC could mean they finish fifth. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, they still have they still have talent on their team. Don't get me wrong, and they still have a good goaltender who can steal them a few games, but. They had, what was it? They had seven ties last year. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. Seven. I'm, <laughs> I'm giving a thumbs up, apparently. Um, they, AIC is still going to be a good hockey team. and I don't see them I, falling I'm, below I'm glad, fifth or I'm sixth. glad we, we play them in the first half of the year. It's right there are last two games before Christmas, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It'll be, I think, yeah, I see it'll still be. I, I kind of did a little standings prediction, too, for Atlantic Hockey. Where did I put them? I had, the, I had them in fifth. Yeah, so, I, I think that's accurate for them, honestly. I, I, I think they'll still be good. I think they'll still win, win some hockey games, but I can't see them cracking the top four with because there are teams that are going to be in the top four, including uh, Holy Cross. Yeah, they're – they're um, poised for something nuts. Liam McClinsky's back. He's Don't like that junior this year at all. Um, Jack Ricketts is back. He's a senior, and then Jason Grandy's back. He's also a senior. So they're going to be good. They have a solid core over there. They have a very they're solid. Be core really good. There. Yes, they will. And we play them early, and then we're done with them. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, let's hope we don't do with them the rest of the year. So. Um, if they, if they, and they started rolling at the end of the year, so if they, they can got get off to quick. it, it's like that win against us got them going, and then that was it. They just, I mean, they it. just took off. At, they took it all the way to the championship game where they lost to a very good Canisius team. So, yeah, um, they, if they play the way they did in the second half of the year in the postseason, they could very well win the regular season title. Hockey. They could. It's very true. They, very they well could. could. They could. I don't think they will, but they could. No, because we're going to win it again. I wasn't going to say that. Joking, but... I'm saying it. Um. Anyways, look, I I, I know we're going to talk about our team more so in the in the season preview, but I don't think there's a more talented roster in Atlantic hockey than ours. And not saying that that means anything. It, yeah, it doesn't. But Holy like, Cross is like second or third. God forbid, knock on wood, pray to Jesus that uh, we don't go through what Air Force went through last year. And yeah, maybe we dropped the penalty minute count this year. <laughs> but Dan, RIT hockey consists of at least four penalties a game. I, you know, I that. think it was more than that. <laughs> and they were even well, committing penalties at Dev average. Camp. Let's not forget that, too. Holy Cross is going to be good. I, I think they're going to be in contention there. They'll be playing home playoff games in the quarterfinals, I think. Yeah, they will. Um, We average 6.2 penalties. Not minutes, penalties. <laughs> a game yes! Last game. yes! Raider rule number one, cheating is advised. Raider rule number two, see Raider rule number one. That was... I love that. 17.3 minutes a game last year. That's a whole friggin' period. <laughs> Good lord. Um, Your job to... was fun last year, wasn't it? No, oh, Dan, man. <laughs> you were busy last year. Particularly against Canisius. <laughs> they were busy, right. too. Good. Dan, you're killing it with the transitions this time. This today um 
Kanisha. Just like this segue to our they... sponsor that doesn't exist. <laughs> For now. Sponsor us. <laughs> yeah, give us some money. A lot money, of work. Um, just kidding. We don't do any work for this. No, this is pretty quick. <laughs> we just pull stuff out of you know where and just say it. <laughs> it's um, very true. Canisius, obviously the defending Atlantic hockey champions as much as that hurts. However, they they're another lost, team that lost a lot. In... They lost their most valuable player in Jacob Barchevsky. That is going to hurt Wrong. them it was big Keaton time. Master Donato, but okay. <laughs> nah, Barchevsky saved them many, many, many games. Barchevsky won them a lot of games, you're right. But not the yeah. one where we put up 10 goals. <laughs> that was last year. Yeah. You know, as much as I love that, I don't want to talk about last year. Um, they, they lost a lot. They have a good amount coming back. And they have guys that I think are ready to step into those roles that didn't like when you have 16 seniors, you have guys sitting on the bench that could be first liners on probably other 70% teams. of other teams in Atlanta hockey. Yeah. And they're playing third line because there's just no room. And it's a good problem to have. Like, I look at a guy like Max Kuznetsov who probably didn't get the ice time he should have been because they were loaded. I think he's bound for a good for a really good senior season. He probably is, and just he he's a physical player. He he's a pass first guy, six goals, twelve assists, but can also score. So, mm-hmm. um, when you also have a defenseman putting up twenty points in forty games, that's good. Yeah, coming that's, back. So that's we have that. When... We have that twice. Um, <laughs> Sucks but to suck, Canisius. Losing Master Donato and Ryan Miato is not. And Barchevsky. Right? You, you have and, like the three of them. Yes. They I'm lost saying. a lot of guys, okay? I can't figure out if their one goalie came back. He's not in the transfer portal. They haven't posted the roster for this year. Who, Hawthorne? Yes. The guy we scored two goals on after Barchevsky gave up eight? Yes, but veteran goaltending is huge. Oh, yeah. No, I just wanted to continue the joke that Dan was making. Um, yeah, it'll Come be... on, Canisius. Post your freaking roster. They, I don't know with them. I feel like they may drop. How far can you drop, though? I mean, they finished in fourth. They, they were not the best regular season team in our league by any means. I could see them finishing, like, sixth, honestly. Because I think the only reason they won a, lot, a bunch of games they won, like, those little, those those close, like, you know, overtime wins that were like two one, but that's all yeah. because Barchevsky's in there just keeping you alive. And now that goaltending wall is gone. Like, what do you do? Now you got to score four times a game and make I'll, sure I'll that, that happens. If Hawthorne came back, because we don't have any confirmation on that, they'll be fine. They should. If he goal, didn't, they're, they're screwed. Then I don't, I don't want to say they're screwed, but they goaltending is important. In our, especially in our league, it, it, you can ride a goalie in our league, and I, obviously we've seen that a few times in the last decade. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's they're they're that one team that I think has the biggest range of where they can finish. Yes. Um, I don't think they can win the regular season title, but I. They could be up there. They could be playing home games in the quarters. So. It could be. Um, Speaking of next. goaltenders and needing a goaltender, uh, Niagara is now in need of a goaltender because Veltri obviously went to the portal and jumped ship and ran to Robert Morris. They got one. They still have They got one. one. Jared but Fisk he... from AIC. Oh, that's true. Niagara. Fisk did go there. I forgot about that. So that's that was their big pickup. Um, I mean, he won 10 games last year. So, I mean, he was not the reason AIC lost in the quarterfinals by any means, but. No. Um, yeah, Niagara is another team that I'm like curious to watch early 
because they brought in some guys in the portal and they didn't really lose. They lost a good amount to graduation. Yeah, they, they had a ton of grad students jump ship. Like, they're kind of like the anti Canisius and that a lot of Canisius is like grad student senior guys. Like, from came, last year. Yes. They like a lot of those dudes they came, all came back. back. For last year, but then you look at Niagara this this after this past season, and all those guys who could have returned for their last year just left. Oh my god, so, I could cry. Ryan Namovsky's gone. Oh, uh, <laughs> is it oh. Cox gone also? No, he's back. Oh, he stayed. Okay, I thought, I thought I saw his so is Shane. Uh, so did Carter Rancliffe. Um, they. Niagara again is another one of those teams where I think they could finish in a couple different places. Both them um, and Kanishas, I'm curious to see what happens with those guys. I have them in shut, third. Shut I have them really? in third only because I think Fisk is a goaltender that can carry you and steal you some games. Um, now yeah, I, I did these predictions after I looked through everybody, and I was like, it was more so I was looking at other teams versus Niagara themselves. True. Again, Atlantic hockey, I think, is going to be tight. It always is. It's going to come down to the last weekend. Teams are going to be playing for things on the last weekend, but which is like the best weekend of the year. It's just the most fun ever. It's more. It's so much fun when you're not involved in that chaos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and oh, yeah, exactly. Believe me, if we were involved in that chaos last year, that would have been a mess. <laughs> I think I would have jumped <laughs> off the roof of Palasini. Uh, <laughs> Um, speaking of another team that lost a goaltender, Sacred Heart is in an interesting been, spot as well. Chase has been waiting to talk about Sacred Heart this whole time. You know, um, if he didn't notice by looking over his shoulder. And if you haven't been in the Discord in the, the last hockey three gods, months. Luke Lush is an RIT Tiger. The really? Come home. <laughs> Whoa, no way. If everyone is aware, this is my new friend Sam Gerard. Frozen? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my new friend Gerard. No, sorry, Glenn. His name is Glenn. Um, he's going to be the floating llama head that sits behind me for the entire season. Um, when Luke plays, <sighs> I will wear the mask to start the podcast. That's pretty much how it's going to work. Um, Why would you spoil that, you idiot? Because it's just soiled it. Up to it. Soiled it. Soiled it. Anyways, I you know listen. Um, this is the moment we have. We can finally talk about this after months of being told we have to shut up. So we can finally say Luke Lush entered the transfer portal after this season. Obviously, we had our fun with him and poke. we had a good fun back and forth with him, and he transferred here. We're going to tell ourselves that he came here because of us. Yeah, no. that's, yeah I'm not saying we're the ones that got <laughs> but him. It's to probably come here, not but... the reason. It's probably it's, not it's the reason, but it is to not, us, so we're going to run off with it. It's probably academic, but... Yes. Okay. He's going to let us think that it's because of us. Yes. And you better bet Which all your... Which is me. <laughs> you better bet all of your sweet behinds that he's going to be on this podcast at some point during the season. Because if you think we're not having him on here, you are on crack. So let's just make sure that that is out there. He's not the only player they lost. No, um, they did lose others. That was just the most notable one to RIT fandom. Neil Shea and Austin Majera are both gone. Um, they were grad students last year. They left. Um, they accounted for fifty-eight points last year. Yeah, that's for Sacred Heart. So, Dan, are you bored? Am I boring you, Dan? <laughs> Sorry, where was I? <laughs> where was I? But they are getting back Kevin Lombardi and Brayden Tuck on the yes, on top. They're good. Sacred Heart's going to be fine. I, the, if they can get their – what's that kid's name? Justin he played Robbins against is us. still there, right? Yes, thank you. Yes. He, I say, I, Justin I'm Robbins is still sure? there. Uh, I, I thought he was. Unless – if they lost both Lush and Robbins, that might not bend well for them in the end. That's a different story. Yes. If they um, lose both of them and they lose Shea and the, all those other guys, they are like bottom feeders, unfortunately, for them, not for us. Sacred Heart's website is horrible. Oh, I man, I just can't wait. This is gonna be so good. Um, one other team we didn't talk about is uh, Mercyhurst. We'll get to them. Uh, I have nothing saying Robbins is gone. 
But he's not on the There's roster. Nothing saying that he's still there. No, because they don't have the roster up. Oh, that's true. So he's he most likely is probably still there. Yeah. We'll just assume that for now. But if the, mm-hmm. if his rosters come out, he's not that he's and he's not on it. That would be shocking. Mm-hmm. And not good for them. Not good for them. Well, I think he was a senior. No, he wasn't a senior. He was a younger guy. I think he was a senior. No, there's no way. He Justin was Robbins. Guy. Justin Robbins was a senior. Oh, so maybe he is gone. Yikes. And they had a they had another goalie transfer in Milberg. Oh, and they lose all three of the goals. They're screwed. If they lost oh, Lush God. Robbins and the other guy, they are all they are screwed. Unless um, they have some they, rookie they brought in comes... they, they they brought in a goaltender. Yeah, if that guy um, doesn't come in and start playing like Patrick Waugh, they're done. Chase Clark, he came from Quinnipiac. And he's a Washington draft pick, so okay, so probably he's, good. He's probably um, good. Played in eight games last year, and he was only a freshman. He played in eight games, so why would he leave on a team? Piac? He played eight games on a team that won the national championship. I was gonna so. say, and oh, by the way, got a ring. He was gonna say, why would he leave? My God, stay there because he only played in eight games, and I think Quinnipiac's goalie's coming back. So. Oh, that's fair. I bet you he's their. I bet you he's their starter coming into this year. Oh, they'd be stupid not to start him. Um, obviously they'll give somebody else a shot, but I. It's they're gonna ride him to the very end. I think so. Um, they also, I mean, they didn't really lose a lot to the portal. They picked up a good amount in the portal. Um, TJ Walsh from RPI had 17 points last year. Not bad. Not bad. On a team that wasn't all that great. So I guess 17 points is pretty good. Um, yeah. They're another, like, I, I feel like Atlantic hockey's, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Atlantic hockey's so wide open. Mm-hmm. It like, always, anybody can season. finish anywhere. I had them in sixth. Um, yeah, I they're gonna drop this year big time. I don't think they'll have the same year they did last year because they are no. losing all that offense. But yeah, yeah, they're 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 big money guys jumped ship and either graduated or are no longer here. It's kind of hard to say they jumped ship when they ran out of eligibility, JJ. Well, that's why I said they, they that, didn't really have a choice, and, and that's why I followed up with because they either graduated or transferred out. Yes, Nobody but that really still implies out. that. What are you talking about? There was a one big transfer out. Yeah, great. They had one guy. Yeah, and everybody else graduated. So what? I I, I covered my bases. And Don't he, say and I didn't. Technically, Luke graduated. He fulfilled yes. his commitment. He did not have to stay. Yeah, and he came here because we're better. We should know that. That you fulfill your four-year commitment, you don't have to stay. I mean, sorry, we're just not used to guys not staying because they love playing here so much that they just stick around for a fifth year, as evidenced by, you right. know, the last two well, years. Well, Calvary really went back. to Merrimack. That's one guy out of how many, like? I was so close to winning Hockey East. Ugh. I wanted them to so bad. I, I had Merrimack winning the national championship last year once we got eliminated because I was like, well, I'm going yeah, to – there's still, there's still one former Tiger left hanging around. I don't – that, that That's like when I was like six years old filling out March Madness brackets and it didn't matter how good Syracuse was. Syracuse <laughs> was the champion. <laughs> hey, man, you can do that. Uh, the only um, other team we have left is Mercyhurst. Yes. Um, I don't really know how to. <laughs> We're not going to talk about one thing. Um, no. the, uh, well, anyway, why well, did just, you I'll, even? I'll put it this way: they had a very, they had a very turbulent off season, and half of it doesn't pertain at all because it's just irrelevant public drama, and we're not going to go into any of it. Right. So, if you were expecting um, us to talk about that, it's never going to happen. So, just move on if you were expecting it. They lost. Lord a lot. have mercy. That's the worst. <laughs> Saint Ange gone. Ah, Damn, just ignored it. So it. Damn, that's going on a whiteboard this year. I, hope <laughs> I got you, Dan. Lord have mercy, um, they're the worst. That's so good. 
Cade Townen, gone. Robert Morris. Yep. Um, Jonathan Bendorf, gone. Other guy, gone. <laughs> Other guy? <laughs> <laughs> the man Nate, has a name. Nate is channeling no. his inner Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It doesn't matter what your name is. Oh, that other guy. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that he guy. must not be named. Um, they, they lost a lot. They did lose a lot. Didn't really... Now, again, the, the biggest question mark in every team season is freshmen right Mm -hmm. like you never know how a freshman class is going to come in and play um and that includes us i know there's a lot of excitement around ours and we'll get to that Mm -hmm. um you never know how it's going to work out when they come into college hockey right it's a whole new level it's a it's a big jump from junior to college it's it's a crazy jump but I mean, they have some guys coming back, too. Mickey Burns is coming back. Marco Reifenberg is coming back. I mean, they have a whole line. And I'm pretty sure all three of these guys played on a line together. Um, Their top three scorers coming back. And they are good. I didn't even mention Eric Esposito graduated. That was a big loss for them. And they lost Tyler Harmon, their goaltender. Yeah, those guys. So, they... Yeah. There's a good number of teams in this conference that lost more than they gained. And it's going to be interesting to see once the season gets going, how well they play against other teams. Cause there are a lot of teams that were able to maintain a lot and keep a good chunk of what they had. Mercyhurst benefited from air forces injuries because Mercyhurst won 10 games last year. Yep. If it wasn't for the air force injuries, they don't make the playoffs. No. And we end up playing Air Force first round, probably, or somebody else, because they probably would have somebody been way else. higher. They would have been honestly. We probably would end up playing Holy Cross because I think Air Force was going to finish higher than Holy Cross last year. But yeah, that yeah, that's probably right. Great. No, it would have been Niagara because they were towards the no. bottom too. I mean, Holy Niagara Cross was tumbled the last week or two of the season. Yeah, because they, they were third or fourth. I think they were they fourth. Were fourth. And then they finished in seventh after the last week. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah, there was like because they got teams. they got swept by somebody. I, I think it was Army, and that's what made Army climb. Yes, no, you're right. Army did sweep them. That's right. I think climbing is part of their training. What kind of training are you here for? Army training, oh. sir. It's a great. They played movie. Army. They played Niagara and they played Canisius the last three weeks of the year. Oof. Purple on purple violence. (laughs) Purple on purple violence. Friends don't let friends wear purple. (laughs) Facts. Um, Unless it's an old Nighthawks jersey. I have to send you something. (laughs) Anyway. Um. Yeah, I mean, so it, it's another one of those where it's like, how do your you really need some of your freshmen to step up if you're Mercy Hurst? Um, yep. They are, I think they're going to struggle. I, I have would them say finishing so also. in 10th, barely ahead of Bentley. So, yes, Dan. <laughs> um, So, yeah, I, Atlantic Hockey is going to be another fun year, I think, hopefully. Um, a lot of good teams, a lot of teams that can win the league, a lot of teams that probably won't, but you never know. Holy Cross was the seventh seed. And, and they went they all the way cha- They were, you're, they you're were honestly, score, they were scoring first away from winning Atlantic Hockey. And, <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that game one nothing? Two nothing, with yeah. well, yeah, it was one nothing because the second goal was an empty net goal. It doesn't, so, yeah, it doesn't even matter. They score first. That game ends very differently. I'm excited. I think we're in for another uh, Atlantic hockey e season. Yes. What the it's hell does be, that mean? It's, it's going to be a wild ride. That's what it means. Oh, he, Atlantic yeah, hockey. I, I understand is going that reference. Insanity. Um, I think the other the other big news thing that came out over the summer that pertains to RIT is 
Corner Crew was named the ECH 2023 Student Section of the Year. Let's go. That's why I have my Respect the Atlantic t-shirt on today, people. So oh, thank you to them. For... so mad. Oh. They Children were of... so mad. Children of Yost was mad, and then we hit them back with the Force of the Sun, and they got stunned and had no idea what to do. They were like, oh, my God. First of all, they're like, to... they're like, take our nine national championships and shove it you know where. <laughs> and then we hit them back with the funniest meme known to humankind, and they just didn't have any response to it. Which, by the way, shout out to Ryan West, because he has been cooking up some incredible stuff. And honestly, he's part of the reason why, because I mean, they said in their post it was us traveling, energy at home, and then just the social media presence. So... To all the people who, you know, made art, graphics, you know, Ryan West making memes and stuff that we post. Uh, Anybody fight, that came with us to away games. That really? too, yeah. That's a, that's a financial commitment. Yes. Because we're not a club. We don't have, like, like, no. like Michigan, like Penn State, like these big schools. Those student sections are official clubs. Yeah. They get funding to do stuff. We don't. We and fund you- ourselves. And when you and when you look at a lot of these other schools, even in our own conference, like it's I've said it before and it's said again. It's pathetic going to schools like Canisius because they have their student run fan organization and there's like four of them there. And then there's 55 of us that occupy half the arena and we boo them out of their own house. and We spank them 10 to four. So well, we don't occupy half the arena. We fill up half a section. But yeah, but it sounds like we right. occupy half the building. Like we own there's no the soundproofing in that building. <laughs> yeah, like like we own the Harbor Center last year. Yeah, we did. most hockey rinks don't have soundproofing. No, but like you guys get my point. Like where we go most of the time for games, we own the building right. while we're there. That that is our right. house. It is basically a home away from home game. Also, you say that, but if I were to tell you our all-time record at Harbor Center, you would throw up. Oh, I would throw up. But last it's year, horrible. But last year, when there was about a hundred of us at one of those games, that was that's insanity. Fun. That's fun. Like, also, that's the thing. I mean, like, just so the children of Yost know, who's on first? <laughs> thank you first. thank that you was thank so good. did you ever comment that to them because that would have been lovely i don't oh remember God. it's been way too long. i still get like instagram notifications of like so-and-so is like your comment from three months ago when ec i went, that we I went back one. and i went back and read through some of those um some of those guys actually just the other day, I went through and was reading back the uh, comments from the post that Niagara made of us, and I thought, that "Oh, was that is still." I, I enjoyed reading still that. Cur- Listen, oh, I graduated this past year. If you ask me right now what my career, like my favorite memory from RIT was, it is making it onto Niagara's Instagram account because we I made fun of them they, so hard they and they even, cried about it like a bunch of little babies. It's there they still. Didn't even tag us in it. I know, right? No, they did. They tag us in the in the caption. Did they? Um, yeah. yeah, but that doesn't do anything. They should have tagged us on a post. Still the best. Oh. And the fact that it's still there is like, why well, I, I love it. I'm proud of it. I can't wait to go back there and we we take we take a poster board that has a screenshot of it. It's like put this two in Thursday games at Niagara this year. We'll talk about that when we get that'll yeah. be an argument we get into when we get to that and how much their school hates their hockey team. Um <laughs> The Sorry, one time I go to a men's away game. You gotta go to more of those this year. And there will be more of those this year because we are gonna try our best to go to as many away games that are remotely close as we can. Hey, we got a title to defend. We gotta up our oh, game here. Yeah. If you thought Corner Crew couldn't get to another level, just you wait. Oh my god. We got there's just some stuff you people in the wait. kitchen right now waiting. It's pretty good. I've been planning things for the last – how long has it been since hockey ended? Uh, we started March. planning things the day after the season was officially concluded. Ah, uh, yes, my favorite length of time, March. <laughs> <laughs> how, many right. marches, how many marches has it been since March, Dan? <laughs> Zero? Um, 
So before we go off the rails, is there anything else you guys would like to talk about news wise that pertains to either teams or the corner crew itself? Um, nothing uh, necessarily hockey related, but uh, Rocky is going yes. to the Frontier Field Walk of Fame in a couple of weeks here. Um, mm-hmm. When is that? Game? It's like September. I was say when is that or whatever. Game? I'm gonna be at that I game. Mean, Let's go. I think it's September third. Um, this will definitely be out before then. So, yes. well, well, well before so that's, then. Um, that's the day before Labor Day. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so students will be back. So everybody get your tickets. Um, come on out. Support. Support Rocky. the goat. Um, there is no better voice in Rochester. I will argue there's no better voice in sports. Um. The man's done a lot, and yeah. he deserves all the praise. I, I think we had the conversation, too, when he got nominated. We were like, he's not there already? Yeah, I was kind of like, shocked. After everything he does, he's not there any already. Oh, one more quick thing. Um, <laughs> Union. Union. What are you doing? What have they been doing? I'm, am I behind on something now? Chargers? Oh, that was dumb. You where's where's Philip Rivers? He's too busy turning his He's 10 children child. into a full offense. <laughs> One more. No, he can count himself as the quarterback. He's He's got 10 kids plus himself. There's your offense right there. Is it a corner crew podcast if we don't mention other sports? <sighs> Chargers are garbage. Any team called the Chargers and immediately just instantly hated in my book, but I'm a Raiders That's fan. an opinion. Um. But well, if, I, well if, if, we're, them. if we're gonna go off the rails with other sports, Nate, tell the Red Sox to stop beating the Royals. I've suffered enough this year. <laughs> Are they winning? Are they winning? I have, I'm not even getting attention. It's either two or three nothing. Two nothing. Wow, end of the six. Unacceptable. Uh unacceptable. Um, so that being said, one quick thing I gotta make sure that we all mention. Um, if you have not yet, season tickets are already out back on sale again. Get them now. They I your excuse. I don't want to. They sold six hundred season tickets already. Are that you is even nuts. Gonna get... Dan, are you even gonna get season tickets, or are you just gonna, you know, work? I mean, he works the game. Is he? Why would he waste money buying tickets if he can already gets in for free? That's kind of stupid for him to do that. <laughs> Dan just big brains the system so he gets into every game for free now, <laughs> <laughs> and he gets one it's of the best paid. seats. About. That's called big. Yeah, he gets he gets paid to do what he loves. That's called big braining the system. Um, (laughs) So season tickets are back on sale. The renewal period, you can still renew them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still if you haven't yet, you can still renew them. You can you can still buy new season tickets. It's worth it. If you're a student, it's only fifty dollars. You get every game, and then you get the ten percent off card for the concessions and like the spirit. Every game except homecoming. Yeah, you get homecoming is separate. And I was going to get to the Guelph game as well, but we'll get to that. And I was also going to say the homecoming tickets at the time of this recording are now on sale. So if you have not, go get them. I know 119 still has a bunch of seats left. 121 121 is basically sold out. Yeah. By the time this comes out, 121 will probably be gone. So you'll have to get 119. But if you get there early, it's not going to matter. Because honestly, people just jump between 119 and 1. 21 no days. don't do that this year you please, you shouldn't do, you shouldn't do that because it caused problems but it will inevitably happen we just can't stop that um so yeah get your tickets now because they're out and the season is quickly approaching um if you have not already subscribe to the youtube channel because oh, why would done. you okay All why, right. why would you not want to decisions. i mean unless you have something else you'd like to talk no, about i'm maybe. good so if you have not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so you are notified when new episodes go live because you better believe there's going to be a ton of stuff coming leading up to the season, along with the women's season preview, men's season preview, and probably some interviews because we've got some in our back pocket that we've been kind of sitting on for a while. So be prepared for that. Um, you laugh, yeah, I'm Nate. Right. I'm laughing because we've been saying that for weeks. We did listen to well, our to our, our schedules credit. got crazy. We all so, we did try the people we tried to get on. Nuts, no, nothing so. lined up. So and, and it's not just our back, schedules; it's other. No, it was yeah. the schedules, schedules of the other people also. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was the. It, but we will have everybody that we hope to have on this summer on eventually, um, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, 
Instagram is still a thing, and that is where a lot of the craziness and smack talk will be. Um, if you have not already, follow that account. Um, you can also go to the Instagram and find a link to the Discord server, which you should probably join if you want to, you know, be in a server full of a bunch of crazy RAT fans that love hockey as much as you do. Uh, I can't wait they, for the server to pick back up again, man. Oh, my it's... God. And we hit a 1,000 people in it <laughs> and have yeah. to question every decision we've ever made because we never thought it was going to get that big. Um, so there's that. The Discord is a great place to go if you want to share fan art, talk to other fans, and also, most importantly, Help us figure stuff out for away games. If you want to go to more away games this upcoming season, because like we said, we got to defend that title. So it's time to step up a little bit. If you can make away games, we're going to have Google Docs and Sheets where you can go in there and, you know, hey, I'm interested. I want to go to these games. We're going to be having one coming up soon for the season opener. That's going to be up in St. Lawrence. So that's going to be up soon. Be ready for that. Like if you're not already get in that discord and just start, or interact with people it's fun it's really fun um are we still doing spotify i totally forgot yes so if you're, if you're on spotify that that's great if you're not go over there too vice versa again you can also subscribe to us on spotify and get notified when there are new episodes live there as well that being said i'm gonna wrap this up for today we are so excited to be back we're all happy that hockey is slowly but surely a- approaching we have a bunch of fun stuff coming a bunch of fun stuff coming for you guys very soon. We'll see you guys in the next one. Go Tigers. Roll tag. I wonder how many volleyball matches I'll work this year. R-I-D, R-I-D, R-I-D.